to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm coming to you today from Waikiki Beach. We had 60-foot surf last weekend on the North Shore, but not the pretty kind. Uh, it's very rare. Uh, most Usually when you're a surfer, you're surfing waves that are generated by thousands, at least at least 1,000 miles away and often four or 5,000 miles away. But this low-pressure system came right over the top of uh, Oahu and generated victory at sea-type surf on the North Shore. Everyone was basically running for shelter. The water was coming up over the roadways and stuff, but luckily I'm down here in Waikiki Beach, and we had a big wind event, but didn't have too much in terms of crazy surf. But really cool thing is happening uh, this uh, this year outside my window here. I'm right in Waikiki. Uh, in fact, there's a surf cam in my in my house that about 20,000 surfers a day check out, where they can see the surf in, in near Diamond Head. But the, there are whales coming around uh, Diamond Head and into the Waikiki area. Every day they come to the same air, the same little quadrant, uh, about 4:30 in the afternoon, and uh, my wife and I were down at the Moana. My, my I call it my living room, my favorite little, my favorite the original hotel here in Waikiki, and I saw a whale come all the way out, out of the water and breach. Uh, normally, you know, they you'll see their their plumes and you'll see their hump come over and then their tail flap, but. These whales were coming all the way out of the water and breach. And so I said, look. And so Cindy jumped and she was all excited. But uh, the people around us weren't that excited. They were, they were like, what are these kooks? You know, what are they excited about? And um, kind of like that's kind of like our, our relationship with the Lord. People are like, what are they? What do they see that I don't see? You know, Christians are so enthusiastic. That's what the word enthusiastic means in and theos means in God. And so then we grabbed a couple of people and said, look, look. And they would look, and they would look, and they would, they wouldn't. The, the whales would go underwater. You know, you got to be patient. And then, uh, about the time they would sit down here, they would come breaching out of the water, fully out of the water. These huge whales make a big splash. We go look, and by the time they look, they they didn't see. And it's it's almost it's kind of like the Eucharistic presence of Jesus, and you know the the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus in the Eucharist. Um, if you want to know the Lord, if you want to find the Lord, you have to look. And you can't just casually look like, oh, okay, I tried that, been there, done that, got the T-shirt. you got to actually look. The Bible says that I am the rewarder of those that diligently seek me. And I believe it was G.K. Chesterton. Sometimes I get his quotes mixed up with C.S. Lewis. But I believe it was G.K. that said um, that God hides himself just enough so the one who doesn't really want to find him won't, but the, but the one that really does will. And so we want to invite you here in the Bear Wozniak Adventure to diligently seek the Lord. Uh, a hunter knows. He goes out in the, in the woods in the fall, and he, he looks for his tree stand or looks where the deer are, and then he's, he'll sit in that stand from before sunrise till sunset, waiting for that perfect buck to come by. He's diligently seeking. That's what diligently seeking is. So we need to press into the Lord. If you, see, if, you, if you seek me, you will find me. The Lord promises that. If you seek me with all your heart, it goes on to say, you will find me. So um, I know what I have in store for you. Plans for peace, not destruction. A future reserved for you full of hope. If you seek me, I will let you find me. So seek the Lord with all your heart uh, through his scriptures, uh, through solid Catholic teaching of the catechism. And uh, so we're excited today because we've never... Never on the history of the Bear Wozniak adventure have we ever interviewed someone with the longest book title, longer book title than my books, and never in the history of the Bear Wozniak adventure have we ever interviewed someone who uh, fences. And for you knuckle draggers out there, that doesn't mean he goes out and builds fences. It means he does what we used to do when we were kids, right? He sword fights. We have with us John Horvath II. He's the author of a book. Um, I can see if I can. Re I can't memorize this title. Return to Order, which is what my third through twelfth grade teachers always told me. Return to Order, Bear. So he's, the author of the book is Return to Order from a Frenzied Economy to an Organic Christian Society. Where we've been, how we got here, and where we need to go. So uh, there, uh, that, that's the longest book title I've ever seen in my life. But if you can, if you can play with, with pointed uh, sticks and not get hurt, then you can make your book title as long as you want. John Horvat II, aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. 
Yes, uh, aloha. Yeah, it's, it's great to be on the show. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you're gonna wonder. You'll, you'll think twice about that before we're done. Hey, <laughs> I want to know what's the what what took your interest in, in fencing? I, I really enjoy it. I, I uh, came to know a, a teacher who who was teaching others, and uh, someone invited me to go to go along. And I said, well, yeah, I'll just to sort of be friends with the other person and to help him out. I said, okay, I'll I'll, I'll do it. Well, I, I got involved in some of these uh, in a bout or an offensive bout, and I loved it. And I just I haven't stopped since. I just it's just really an invigorating sport, and it's it's a sport that you know really forces the person to think. I think you really have to react to to uh, adverse uh, blows, and you have to c come back within seconds. So I think it really sharpens the mind. That's really what really gets me excited about this uh, about fencing. It's a good workout too, I imagine. Oh, it is. Good. Yeah, no, it's immense. It's you really. It's, it's you're standing there. You know, not moving too much, but you really, you really, ha you really do. Uh, it is a workout. Yeah, great, great workout. Well, you know, when you're fencing, uh, do, are you thinking about paying your bills or anything else? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I usually just, uh, I, I just think it's, uh, I, I, I focus on what I need to do. I try to get into where, get into the, to, to, to hit the other person without being hit. And that's it. I mean, but it's it's really invigorating and it's very uh, stimulating. Well, there are the, there are those moments in life when you don't have any room in your brain for then for what you're doing, jumping out of an airplane, for example, or or dropping right. into a big wave or or fencing. Uh, and also, it's so it, it's that it's that kind of I think there's that there's that moment of stillness when you when you're in a when you're in a moment where you're 100 percent focused. Time kind of stands still, in that sense. It's that quiet moment, and uh, and and that that's where we want to go in our prayer life. We want to have that moment where we just have that. There's there's those moments of recollection. Maybe maybe you're reading a a, a good Christian author or the Bible, or you're in prayer, and you just uh, it just takes you away for a moment. Right, and it gets that when you're focused. You know that is a very important thing, not to be spread about. You know, all scattered about when you're in prayer. If you have that, just very just very sharp focus. I think it really really helps in prayer life and in fencing. And in fencing, there's such a, you know, I'm a martial artist. I uh, trained, yes. have a second degree black belt in ninjutsu, and I've trained in a lot of forms. And, you know, body mechanics are body mechanics, but there's something about the precision, the order, the yes. beauty of the martial art. There's something about the beauty of fencing. There's a sort of a, a streamlinedness that you, that you uh, have to protect yourself, but then there's sometimes when you come right out of that uh, with a, a, a unusual attack. But there's isn't there something about the the precision, almost like a ballet? Yeah, it is. You, it's a very good point. My my fencing instructor, he says it's it's one of the, it's the Western martial art. You know, it mm -hmm. is something that adopted the West adopted, and he he makes the Christian connection. He says yes, it had it. It is something that uh, you know in, invokes a t an idea of chivalry, and and you know mm. you make connections with all sorts of ideas, not just the actual uh, the actual physical part as well. So I think it, it is a very uh, you know very 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 it's an amazing sport. And you know uh, the sword, you know, is such a big thing in the scriptures. No one no one gets to heaven without right. being pierced. You know, Jesus was was pierced on the cross. Mary's heart was pierced. Uh, we hear of right. Catherine of Siena's heart. Uh, we and we know that we all are to have that piercing that circumcision of the heart so there's there's something about um the sword of the spirit the uh the holy spirit that's so so powerful in our in our own christian you know mindset Def yeah definitely i mean the sword is very much there i mean the sword is in the shape of a cross even you know when you have mm. a sword that has that cross mm. the cross piece and you and you see saint Fran the crusader you know the, mm -hmm. also has has the cross and that famous statue of saint louis with his sword uh, yes is, yes Cross. I have so, them on yeah, my rosary. Definitely. Well, oh. what's the coolest? What's the coolest thing that ever happened in fencing? What was the big? You, you, when you could say, "Ah, I really arrived." When you had a, you know, you had a good striker. Does that something like that come to mind? It does. Yeah. At a certain point, uh, when I first started, I was just slapping all about, just going all, just going all over the place. It, is, it was extremely tiring. But at, at a certain point, I said, "Well, I, I learned to uh, to do the moves that you're supposed to do, which are efficient." Which don't tire you out, and then I said, "Well, this is this is really living. I know I, I'm not flailing, flailing all about and, and doing useless things. I'm doing exactly what I need to do, and I, 
I do my uh, when I when I need what I need to do, and that's what's what's and important. Th and that's really the seven virtues: justice, self mastery, prudence, fortitude, faith, hope, and love. That's the precision of fencing. But right, I mean, it's that ordered approach to life. But is that where jogging came in when you were losing? Is that when you started to to enjoy jogging too? Where you'd run for, run away, or no? That's a different. That came from a different. Interest. I think jogging just helps you get that, <laughs> that stamina for the yeah. for the fencing, you know. Yeah, I know in martial arts, I would say that um, when I would win at win at fighting, it was more from stamina than skill. We're talking to John Horvat the second, and he's the author of a of a book, Return to Order, from a frenzied economy economy to an organic Christian society, where we've been, how we got here, and where we need to go. He's also uh, on a member of the board of directors of the American Society for the Defense of Traditional family and property, which I subscribe to. I get, I get your newsletters. Okay. And so we're really proud to have you on our show. When we get right back, should we talk more about fencing or whales, or maybe we talk about your book? Okay, that sounds great. Maybe okay, we, both. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back uh, to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm so happy that we have uh, Solidarity uh, HealthShare as one of our sponsors. You can go to our website. You can see their link there. They help us out uh, uh, so much, and that's one of the reasons why we get to come to you every week. Um, they, but they, uh, two of them, the members of my family use them. They're just great. And the thing about that is that when you use Solidarity HealthShare, you know you have a HealthShare um, form of insurance that is true to Catholic teaching. So we're so proud of the boldness that they've, that they've uh, shown. And then also Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, who I just really love. When I was in Hawaii filming season three of our TV show, Long Ride Home, I was trying to uh, finance a used car. And uh, I talked to someone over there in their finance department by email back and forth. And while, while I'm in the middle of shooting a motorcycle-based reality show, which means there's no phones usually available, Somehow she got it all financed and took care of it for me, and they were just amazing. I got to go to their, their offices in Notre Dame. They're the largest uh, uh, Catholic credit union in the, in the world. And just love the people. Got to go to a Notre Dame game, too, by the way. So Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, thank you so much. You can, go, you can find them on our website, too. Um, also, don't forget to go to our, our uh, YouTube channel. If you want to see what John Horvat II, our guest, looks like, uh, you can go to the YouTube channel, and if you enjoy the show... Uh, then you can share it with your friends. It's a great way to participate in our evangelistic outreach. John Horvat, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Yes, great to be on. Let's talk about this this subject. Well, you know, what? I want to ask you one question first. Uh, mm -hmm. Your your just your your background as a Catholic. Were you were you raised Catholic, or how to tell tell us a little bit of your personal journey? Right, I'm a I'm a cradle Catholic. I'm from originally from Kansas City, uh, near Kansas City. So I uh, grew up on a farm. Um, wow, I, that's cool. Uh, yes, and and uh, I, I went to the University of Kansas in, in the seventies. I studied under the Great Books program of uh, Professor John Senior. I want to do that. <laughs> I right. would love to do that. I'd love to get an education instead of go to get a, go to college to get a job. You know, well, I mean was, that's just beautiful. Yeah, it was fortuitous because it's a public university, but there were certainly a lot of conversions that were associated with it. No because, kidding! Wow. Yeah. Well, when you study the great books, you go, you stay, you look for the truth, and you'll eventually end up in the Catholic Church. So uh, I wow. was very fort fortunate to be in that program that helped wow. me. Wow, I want to talk a whole program just about that, but go on. <laughs> well, from there, I, um, I I I joined the American Society for the Defense of Tradition, Family, Property, and I've been with the with the organization for 42 years. So no that's, kidding. That's my thing. I, I saw that those ideas that I, that the great books really inflamed me, for, uh, you know, I was inflamed by those. I, I, I saw I could find, I could uh, put those into action. So that I, I just uh, went, I went that, that way and I've never turned back. Well, let me ask you this question. If I'm going to be, uh, a, a, well, what, give me three, five, ten authors that, that, that uh, everyone should read. 
Um, as far as great books are concerned, yes, you, know, you great books, should... not my books, your great books. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, we 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 would talk the the Homer, the, uh, by, uh, Homer, the Odyssey, the the Aeneid by Virgil, um, you know the. Um, I would say some of the logic of because uh, definitely St. Thomas is, is in there. Um, the Aristotle, no? Er, of course, Aristotle, yeah, the physics. Plato, yeah, yeah. And Pla Plato, yeah, those are the, those are the real classics. Uh, you know, they are written by, by pagan uh, philosophers, but they do have a lot of, you know, just a solidity of background that really help you uh, understand the, the meaning of philosophy and why philosophy is important. It is the handmaid. Or the servant of theology. It's you love of love of truth. Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have that foundation. So, you know, those are definitely the the, the, the foundational the things. And then well, Augustine loved Plato, and Thomas loved uh, loved Aristotle. Aristotle, yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So they 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 build upon one and the other. Well, truth is truth, right? Right. Yes, uh, exactly. uh, and and uh, and and what Aristotle, what Thomas Aquinas is, he took the best of Aristotle, the philosopher, as he called him, and he si sifted. And got the best out of that, and then synthesized a a, a, a new uh, a, 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 the philosophy of natural law, uh, which right. uh, which should work in any society in any place. Yeah, valid for all times, all peoples, and all places. Yeah, yeah. natural law is is there, and it's it's as what one professor says, it's what you can't not know. What are, what are the two or three main principles of natural law? Uh, natural law is uh, well, I mean, it is that you can you can reduce it to uh, do good and avoid evil, but the Ten Commandments are a very, very succinct uh, uh, um, summary of the natural law, and most a lot of philosophers have recognized. Well, that. but I mean, natural law—it comes from uh, the the root of it. When we say natural law, we're referring to a theological uh, order that God has placed in us, or there's, in other words, it's the way God made us. Right. It's written in the hearts of all men, as Saint Ta as Saint Paul says, and it is something that. Uh, uh, allows the person to uh, it, it orients the person. It makes us who we are. It, it's part of our human nature. You know, if we we have a as you say a teleological in, inner workings that uh, work according to those principles. You know, Aristotle said we should pursue happiness, and yes. uh, he said happiness was would be a result of of per, being a virtuous person, except for he forgot about the fallen nature of man. <laughs> God wants us to be happy, and 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 the Ten Commandments and all of the. All of what what we call natural law is 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 to help us fulfill our end, and Definitely. when we do that, we're happy. Right to the degree that we can be in this world, you know, we all, the cross will always be there, but it is the closest we can get to that to that happiness. Uh, is is the is the is the natural law following the natural law and embracing the cross, the misfortunes that come upon us. Yeah, and you know, so in in our lives, uh, in America today, you see you see this kind of sort of um, Mm. You know, there was rejection of Catholicism, of course, America's a, a, in its foundation, but there was so much of Catholic natural law built into uh, the, the, the Declaration of Independence or into the Constitution, but we're seeing the fabric of our society just, just turning upside down. What is good is called evil, what is evil is called good. What is the thesis of your book, A Return to Order? Return to Order is a, is a book that helps people understand better where we went wrong in our society and in our culture and where we need to go from a Catholic perspective. And it talks about um, the crisis itself, which, uh, which, is, uh, which I say is affected by what I call a frenetic intemperance, a desire to have everything instantly, uh, regardless of the consequences. And this, this is constantly taking our society and, and turning it upside down. And then the second part deals with the return to order that, you know, we need to return to order, but not just any order, uh, the, uh, an order that had already existed, that has a, a proven track record, which is, that of the, which is that of the church and Christian civilization. I mean, the church has solutions that we really don't even imagine exist because they, they have been so hidden and buried. What, what do you see are the, ma the major crisis here in, in America right now? Well, I think it has a lot to do with this this frenetic intemperance. You know, so many times, so, so many times, people just uh, they they don't follow reason, they don't follow right reason, they don't follow natural law because they are they are told that they are to follow their impulses and follow their impulses in a very radical way, in a very strong way to uh, you know that makes it very difficult for them to find their way back. And so I think this this 
this type of mentality of, of everything instantly, uh, regardless of the consequences, very much part and the, of the, the following the impulse. You know, I was at I was at mass one day a few years ago, and this man came up and said, "I want to introduce you. I want to meet you." He, met, he introduced himself, and this is my wife, and this is the guy I told you about, Bear Wozniak. He he follows his passions, and I go, "No, I don't." He goes, "Yeah, yeah, you're that guy. You follow your passions," and I go, "No, I don't." He goes, "Yeah, you're that guy. You do all these things." I go. No, I, I just want to follow God's will. Right. Yeah. You know, in, in, in society today, it's, it's like really, uh, you know, the whole thing with uh, all the myriad of genders and all these other things. It's follow, follow the, this impulse, follow this inclination, uh, and without any grounding in, uh, in natural law. Right, and people have the mistaken impression that freedom is doing whatever you want. And that, that is the modern conception of freedom. But the classical... Uh, Perception of freedom is to is to follow is to is to control your passions. It's self-control because when you are in control of yourself, you're free to do what you want to do, what you need to do, and what will make you happy. Uh, those who who follow their passions eventually become enslaved by them. They be, they are not free. They are enslaved. One like I, uh, we had uh, oh I forget his name now. Mark from the Kingsmen came out and oh, spoke to our know. church, and he talked about men who uh, give their give, get trapped into pornography. The more they pursue it, the more and more perverted it gets. There's no right. license there. There's a, there's a bondage there, and they feel trapped by, trapped by that. You know, freedom is. Um, if you if you just do whatever you want to do, you're going to live in so much bondage. You're gonna you're gonna paint yourself into a corner, where the discipline, like Paul said, why do I do what I don't want to do, and then I don't do what I want to do? That's that fallen nature within us. But right. that struggle we feel within us. Uh, is part of that is part is is the Holy Spirit within us, our conscience and the Holy Spirit within us, fighting for us to be able to be liberated. Uh, Doc, uh, John Harvat Horvat the second. How can they reach you? What's the best website for them to find you? It's uh, www.returntoorder.org. It's, w- a, it's a www.returntoorder.org. Yes. We're talking with John Horvat the second, and uh, this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. You know, the other day I was uh, walking along the beach and I made a comment to my wife, Cindy. I don't have any injuries today. My shoulder's not injured. My calf's not injured. Uh, usually any athlete knows that they're in, they're almost all athletes are, are injured. I watched a basketball the other, other yesterday uh, with Makai Mason playing for Baylor, and he had a very damaged toe, but he played anyway. Uh, in our world today... We have to play though we're injured. We have to fight even though we're injured. We have a, a fallen nature. We have a soul that uh, is, uh, is broken, that's wounded. And we need to be able to learn to fight the wounded. When I trained for my first degree black belt, I uh, had a meniscus injury. And, uh, and I was a- able to overcome that and uh, go ahead and test for my black belt. The second time, I, the second degree black belt, I had a, a really bad calf injury. And uh, every time it would get better, it would re- re-injure itself. And my, my sensei said, well, I guess you're going to have to sit out this test. And I go, well, this is a combative art. And if I ever am going to be in a fight, I assume I'm going to be injured. So I need to learn to fight while injured. And so I went ahead and tr- trained and tested and, and got my second degree, degree in into black belt. We as, uh, we as Catholics, as Christians, we are wounded, but we need to learn to fight while we're wounded. We need to be able to work around our injuries. We need to know how to how to how to train so that we can so that we can continue but the very fact that you feel a fight within your nature that you feel an inclination to do something that you know is wrong but something else in you and resi- is resisting that that's the holy spirit within you the good news is is you feel the war within you so continue to fight the good fight and overcome that wounded nature and go through and and develop a, a life of virtue which leads to a life of of bliss uh, of the beatific vision of Jesus Christ we're here with John Horvat the second, the author of a book called Return to Order. Uh, John, uh, is there such a thing as absolute truth? Of course, yes, absolutely. Yes, truth is, is one. It doesn't change. Truth doesn't change. What, when, you're, when you're out uh, speaking, do you ever uh, get a visceral sort of negative response from people? Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it comes with the, it comes with the, t- the task. I mean, uh, 
Um, our organization, Traditional Family Property, does a lot of uh, campus um, outreach and activism. And there you find, definitely you find just so much of this relativism, of this uh, almost trans relativism, because you're really not dealing with logic anymore. You're dealing with just whatever they self-identify as or whatever they think they are. Okay, so let's talk about logic. We're, we're, we're given a spiritual, rational soul. Right, yes. That's yes. the imagio dei of mankind. So how, what does Catholicism have to offer? Uh, I always say Catholicism is the thinking man's religion. Definitely. Before the Catholic Church, I mean, so many things did not exist. Uh, I, was, I read a, a, very, a very interesting study about law, and they said, well, the, the Romans did develop law and did have certain law, uh, legal codes. But for the most part, uh, the, the, the systemization of law was done by the Catholic Church. And this, and this author, who was not a Catholic, proved it. He said, though, it's the canon law of the, of the church that systematized law and, and, and formed the law schools. Uh, the, the early, in the, in the Italian law schools, they formed the law schools in the Middle Ages, and they built upon certain precepts of Roman law, but Roman law was not systematized. Well, we're, what, what, what happens when you live in a secular society that wants to hold on to uh, the ca certain uh, Christian virtues, mm -hmm. uh, but, but look at it from a secular point of view? For example, uh, to be tolerant, uh, to be gracious in that way, uh, from a Christian point of view, would be different than a secular point of view. In other words, here's an example, a woman who um, uh, was raped having an abortion. Doesn't that mm -hmm. seem to be the compassionate thing? What would be your response to that? No, what would be the Catholic the, response, I mean. The Catholic yeah. response is obviously the, the child has, has a right to life. The, the child has an immortal soul. To deprive the, 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 the child of that, uh, of uh, eternal life, is, is, you know, is not a, is not a, is not charitable at all. It is a, it is it is an abuse, uh, definitely an abuse. An abuse of, of of the of the of the child himself. You know, it is a child. It has a life. It has a it has a soul. We need to cultivate that life, as, and to to kill it is 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 just so contrary to our human nature. So the us. compassion uh, can be misguided, without Absolutely. without within a secular society, that type of compassion can be misguided. Of course. Compassion for the woman, too, because so many women carry the, the wound of ab abortion, and men, too, right. who have participated right. yeah. in it. Uh, definitely. It's, again, you're, we're, we're going back to natural law because you know, the, these kind of things weigh upon our conscious. Conscious is part of, of natural law. It, it, it reinforces it, reinforces it. You know, that, but, yeah, conscience has to be formed, though. It needs yes. to be. So what, what do you mean by um, from a frenzied economy to an organic Christian society? Right. Um, we have an economy that is out of balance. Uh, that's my, my take on it. You know, there's so many uh, forces inside the economy that don't, that run, uh, run over a lot of the moral principles and ethics that should be in place when you have a, an, a balanced economy. Um, I say that we need to go to an organic Christian society. An organic Christian society is a society that's based upon natural law. It's based, based upon natural leaderships. It's based upon uh, a lot of the guidance, the, the guidelines that the, the church has for society that that makes us that naturally um, breaks the frenetic intemperance that we study from today. That are, these are natural mechanisms that keep things in balance, and they, that's the type of society that we need to live in. Well, give me an example. Okay, uh, I'll bring up an example that really I just blew me away. I, I read a, an author by the name of Odd Langham. He's a professor of economics in Norway. He's a Lutheran. But he said one of the most important economic um, institutions in the Middle Ages that kept the society in balance and helped the prosperity of the, of, of, of the, of the time was the sacrament of confession. He said the sacrament of confession uh, forced, you know, put people in, in, into a guideline of honesty, and it set up guidelines for how to deal with very complicated situations. And he analyzed something like 100 or... 200 what they call confessional manuals, which gave guidelines of how to what confessors were to say in the confessional about economic matters. And so he reconstructed the whole economic doctrine of the Middle Ages based on these confessional man manuals. Well, well, how do we apply that today? Well, I mean, definitely um, uh, the economy has changed, but a lot of those principles that were involved are still, still valid. You know, how to deal with... Uh, defects when you're selling things or how to uh, 
when a uh, when is a deal when is it usury and when it is not usury when it's something you know all all these kind of things were discussed in quite in detail by priests in the confessional and by and you know was were 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 thought out and this helped to uh, help to keep the society help keep the society in balance today we don't we don't have that because uh, you know the, it, we're not even thinking in those terms as far as confessional or even in uh, a lot of church doctrine isn't being developed in that in that regard you know my dad used to have a my dad was a deacon in the Catholic Church, and right. he used to have, uh, and he also was a professional speaker prior to becoming a deacon, and he uh, would have uh, uh, Christian retreats uh, in his home on the north woods of Minnesota. They moved up to Minnesota on a lake, and only presidents of companies were allowed to come, and the, the name of the house was called Eagle's Rest. It was 10 acres up there, and uh, which, of course, comes from the scripture verse, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Um, right. There's, in, in some respect, there's something. There's no one more lonely than a president of a company, mm. because oftentimes he's outgrown his friendships mm. with people that he, you know, his high school, college buddies. But now he's the president of this company. He can't confide in his. Uh, he can't confide in his um, his workers. You know, certain things that he has to deal with. Uh, right. So eagles tend to fly alone sometimes. Right. But, that, right. but we can't do that. We need to be developing a, a brotherhood of men. Where at the heart issue, you should still be able to converse. I know the group Legatus, for example. I speak to them a lot. They have uh, they have a great um, uh, outreach to presidents of companies. These are presidents of companies, and they men and women who come together and they can share share uh, the 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 real nitty gritty of mm -hmm. what they're dealing with as as heads of these companies. Are you uh, do you is some of your book based on Reverend Navarum by Pope Leo by Pope Leo? Oh yes, of course. Yeah, dealing with property and the whole the, the whole social order. Yes, it's very much along that line. There's uh, it quotes extensively uh, the social encyclicals of the 19th century as well as uh, well St. Thomas. St. Thomas is the most cited author. Well, we're talking with John Horvat II, uh, the author of the book Return to Order: From a Frenzied Economy to an Organic Christian Society, Where We've Been, How We Got Here, and Where We Need to Go. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite you, invite you guys, please, The Long Ride Home uh, is this incredible television show, uh, you know, men riding motorcycles across the United States. It's one of only two shows on EWTN that's been uh, put on uh, the Armed Forces Network. And it's also, I think, one of only two shows that's showing up. on. We have it on iTunes, Amazon Prime Video, and Google Play. So you can, it, it showed, I think, maybe 20 times on the EWTN Network. And, uh, and But a lot of people only caught one or two shows here or there, and they, they didn't catch it all in sequence. If you go to iTunes, you can buy the whole show and watch it with your family, uh, Power Watch. It's a great show, and we're diligently working on bringing Season 2 out. So we're inviting you to, to, uh, to go to iTunes and, or Amazon Prime Video or Google Play and, and watch Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. It's, it's something that all women wish their husbands would watch. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, we want to invite you to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. you got to go to Bear Wozniak if you want to subscribe. And you can uh, get notified when we post up a new video there uh, for you to be able to watch uh, our show. It goes out to millions of people over the EWTN network. The, the Bear Wozniak Adventure is available on almost every podcast app you can imagine. But we really like the fact that we have this, this YouTube channel. And the more people that go there... And don't just view it, but subscribe. When you subscribe, then YouTube likes to promote us, and then that means they're helping us evangelize. So uh, go to the YouTube channel, uh, Bear Wozniak, and watch, and you can watch our guests. And if you go to our website, uh, deepadventure.com, and subscribe to our newsletter, you are sent a copy of uh, the, the show every Saturday morning, even before it airs on the network. And that way, either through YouTube, or through the newsletter by sharing the new newsletter. But if you go to YouTube, you can share a show with one, with your friends and help us evangelize. So we'd love it if you would do that. Uh, this is Bear Wozniak. We have as our guest today John Horvat II. We only have him on because he's an expert fencer. But he's also uh, a man who loves uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, who I do too. Um, John, how what, do, what would you say to people who want to get an introduction to Thomas Aquinas? How do they... Uh, 
you know, it's a very chewy, chewy, uh, the Summa Theologia, very, very chewy. What would you say is a good way for them to get exposed to his teachings? Probably some kind of introduction or a book that, you know, that sort of cuts it down a little. But uh, I think the, the, the best thing is not to be intimidated by him, to think that, well, he's a super intellectual and it's not understandable that you, you know, have to have a degree to understand. Uh, it's, it's hard sometimes to just read a from cover to cover, but in specific issues, it's, it's so logical and just so refreshing. You know, take a question or one or, no, one or another question that's really interests you. Study that question. I think you'll, you'll, be, you'll, you'll, get, you'll be hooked. I, you know, I certainly will. You know what, like on college campuses today, like, oh, I need to go to my happy place or our safe place. You can't bring certain speakers on campus. You can't ask certain questions. But they used to call Thomas the dumb ox because he asked so many questions. And his professor said, was, I think it was... Was it Albert the Great? Oh, the Great. Okay, yes, yes. His, the bellows of that bull will be heard throughout the world. Um, I got, the way I really soaked up Thomas Aquinas is walking on the beach. I would, on audio books, you know, it's a free app um, where people uh, go in and volunteer to read. I would just listen and listen and listen. Uh, and I've read through it too, but I've read through a couple parts of it. But to just listen to it, expose yourself to that beautiful mind. Definitely. I mean, it's it's not complicated. It's it's made for the, the Catholic. You know, it's it's it just yeah, exactly that. You know, it has it has a he asks a question, and then he gives the two or three best wrong answers, and he does a really good job of presenting them. Mm-hmm. And then he says to the contrary, and then he gives a, his answer, and then he refutes the wrong answers, and it just it just um, it just allows you to see uh, the beauty. Uh, in the intellect of the Lord, in some, in, you know, to the extent that we can grasp. Right, we're not afraid of the of the error. We, we even even present the error in the in the best possible light, and then destroy it, you know, to show how it, it is wrong. Well, Augustine said, "Truth is like a lion; it doesn't need to be defended. Just set it set it loose." Right, exactly, and he definitely is part of that. Definitely part of that. But you have a big smile on your face because I know you love because truth is a beautiful, truth is as beautiful as a waterfall. You know, truth is a beautiful, beautiful thing. In fact, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. What ways does this, does this uh, pursuit uh, draw us closer to a personal relationship with God? Yeah, I think that's very important that you mentioned that because uh, it, intellectually it's good to know the truth, it's, it's good to know philosophy, it's good to know theology, but uh, the fact that the, the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us change the whole dynamics of, of religion in, in general, because we could personalize it. We relate to people. People relate to other people. They don't relate. They, they do relate to certain ideas, but if you want the maximum type of union, it's definitely with other people, and Christ did that with, by, by becoming flesh. And so tell, tell us more about that. As you, as you came in in your youth and you began to discover these things, how did your personal walk with him develop? Well, um, I, I, I profited a lot by having great mentors. You know, it was that I think that helps a lot when you have people who you look up to and you are able to, uh, you are able to, they're able to lead the way. I, I was fortunate by being in, uh, in the path and finding these mentors. I, I, as I mentioned before, Professor John Senior, he was one that t- t- took me a, a good portion of that way. I was I studied under a, a, a Brazilian Catholic thinker by the name of Professor Plinio Correa de Oliveira, and he also pushed me ahead enormously in, the, in, these, in these directions. So I think you need to look for mentors. You need to look for those people who will, who are people, you know, as, you, as we mentioned, a person, we relate to people. We don't relate to, as much to, as to, to ideas. Finding those people and, and following those people uh, will take you a long way. And it will take you a long way. That's why we encourage men to uh, participate in a men's group. And if there isn't one in your parish, start one. And we 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 ask we invite people to join Bears Man Cave. You know, it's a secret Facebook group. You can only join it by going to our website first, and then we invite you to join. Uh, but there, the men are sharing with each other, uh, you know, things that challenge each other, mobilize each other, equip each other, and uh, their their needs. And uh, we have a video Zoom meetup every uh, two or three weeks where we all get together on a video Zoom chat situation, and we go through one of my books. And then these men, in turn, are starting their own men's group. So men need, like I was saying earlier, there's nothing more lonely than a CEO. A CEO needs to have other Christian CEOs that they can talk with. And men, too, we need our mentors. And the other thing is, 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 is if you're a Christian and you're a man, 
you're leading whether you know it or not. Someone's following you, so you better get better at leading, you know, uh, th- to go deeper in that way. What about your personal prayer life? What is that? What is your uh, your normal prayer and that sort of I'll, thing like life for you? you? Know, I'll, I'll, I, I definitely, the, the Holy Eucharist and communion is, da- is you know, daily, daily commun- communion. I, I try by all means, but I, I'm very much the rosary. And by that, I mean the 15, 15 decades rosary that Our Lady asked for at Fatima. I mean, I, I pray that every day. Um, I also, uh, I, I, I also um, consecrated myself, according to St. Louis de Montfort, the consecration to Our, Our Lady. Uh, that definitely is part of my spiritual life. Um, and I try to spend a lot of time in front of Our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. You can't, uh, I mean, it just, that is like a powerhouse that charges you up. So tell me about your um, experience uh, with the rosary. What is, when you were praying the rosary, what, what's going on? Um, the rosary, I mean, I think it is a very flexible prayer. It's not, it's not a, it, it, and I think that's why it, it, it really, um, it really uh, is attractive to a lot of people because you never, no two people say the rosary the same way. Mm-hmm. I pray the rosary. I, I try to, uh, to meditate on those on the on the mysteries. I try to think of the mysteries. Uh, I, I make a you know make a special effort. Sometimes I look at, I look at a book or a picture that that, that, ke- that keeps me focused. I think focus is very important in the rosary, and I try to stay focused. And I. Well, this is the beauty I, of the rosary. The the beads themselves give yes. you that sense of focus. You know, it helps. Right. Right, and you could say it anywhere. It doesn't necessarily need to be in a church, or you could be standing, you could be sitting, you could be walking, uh, and I do it all. You know, to be, what it, according to my schedule, it's there. Or in the airport, you know, that's always a great idea to, to take out a rosary and you know and be somewhat conspicuous. And you'll you'll be mm-hmm. surprised sometimes when people walk up to you and say, "Oh, I pray the rosary too," and you say, "Wow, that's that's really impressive." And the rosary isn't isn't a religious act. It's something. It's very powerful. I mean, for me, uh, at this stage in my walk with the Lord, the rosary is, is primarily a weapon. When right, I know what, what, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. yeah, exactly. It's, it's the web, it is the weapon that Our Lady, especially at Fatima, I think, uh, you know, she brought it to us. She, she emphasized it at Fatima as, as a weapon to, to avoid the, the, uh, the chastisements that, uh, you know, we, we well deserve. She, she, always, she said, pray the rosary, pray the rosary. You know, when when we're my wife and I are walking along, or we're in the car, I, I you know, we I say the first part, she says the second part. But every decade, we of the rosary, we will we'll, we'll we'll designate for a certain need that we see, and it seems to be that just a powerful, uh, powerful. You see the results. You see right, God working right. when you pray the rosary. So it's not hard to be motivated. We're talking to John Horvat the second. His book is called Return to Order. From a frenzied economy to an organic Christian society, where we've been, how we got here, and where we need to go. Of course, um, I think the r- root of the word economy is family, in the Latin. So um, right, household, so, yeah, management. It it deals with the household. Yeah, it's it's a Greek word. You're right. Oh, it's a Greek word. Okay, good. Yes, huh? But uh, and where can they find that book, John? Uh, www.returntoorder.org. You'll find uh, the how to get the book, and there's a blog also with articles dealing and there, with similar subjects. Yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, there's other things that John's done too. Uh, John, thank you for being with us. I want to invite everybody once again. Uh, we're going to Greece in a few months. Uh, we're going to be following basically in the footsteps of of Saint Paul. I've been studying him ferociously now for a little over a year, and really excited about going uh, to Greece. We're going to go to Ephesus too, and then take a cruise to um, the island of Patmos, and then two of my favorite islands, Myk- Mykonos and. Santorini, where Cindy and I were betrothed. And so we're inviting you to uh, go to our website and join us on that trip. Until next time, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10 episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 